I'm Mary Lamy. Welcome to the St. Louis Regional Freightways Freight Week STL 2020 third panel discussion. Today we have David Branding. He's the managing director for the St. Louis office of JLL, a national leader in real estate services. This panel discussion is one of several that are part of Freight Week STL 2020 using our virtual format. This is our third year bringing together industry leaders to support the freight industry and innovation. We'd like to thank our Freight Week STL presenting sponsors, Burns and McDonald and the Lock Miller Group and our supporting sponsors, Arco, Contegra and CMT. To lead this conversation, we've asked Doug Rasmussen to join us. He has over 20 years of experience in the transportation logistics and real estate industries. He is the president and CEO of Steadfast City Economic and Community Partners, providing site selection and economic development strategies. Doug has worked with the St. Louis Regional Freightway to increase awareness of the region's global logistics hub and helping streamline the site selection process. Today's conversation will include David Branding's perspective of the St. Louis region's industrial real estate market and how the region stacks up next to our sister regions and also how to advance our industrial real estate market. It gives me great pleasure to be here today with David Branding, Managing Director for Jones Lang LaSalle. Dave is an industrial broker here in St. Louis who does a variety of different things in the real estate industry, both locally and nationally. He works with owners, investors, corporations, and others on leasing, disposition, real estate development, and acquisition. And he's also a national director for Jones Lang LaSalle, which puts him in a lot of different um, situations that are relevant to our conversation today. Specifically, those are site selection, network analysis, and supply chain management. Dave, welcome, and thanks for your time today. Doug, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Well, let's just launch right in, if you don't mind. Um, so, I, Dave, I know you've been in the brokerage business a long time in St. Louis and, and have done a lot of things around town, but maybe just let's start off from a high level. Why don't we talk a little bit about the St. Louis industrial uh, market? How, how large is the market? Sure. From a uh, square foot perspective, uh, St. Louis is a 220 million square foot market. And that puts us uh, on the top 20 list nationally, um, and it, it rivals what our peer markets here in the Midwest are as well. You know, obviously that's a that's a large market, 220 million square feet. Sounds like a big number. Feels like a big number, and uh, and certainly we've been in a major up cycle over the last you know five, ten years, even probably with industrial real estate with a lot of changes and trends. So what what are some of the major trends that you've you've seen over the last five to ten years? You know, I think the biggest trend right now, Doug, um, and it's going to continue to be that way for a while, is is e-commerce. Um, as we as consumers continue to buy products. Um, online and uh, as long as we continue to demand those products in let's say two days or less and I think that's moving to a day or less um, uh, we're gonna see e-commerce as a trend for a long time. So I feel like I'm buying more than ever these days right <laughs> online so that makes sense. What about um, so, so over the last five ten years there's probably some very notable transactions uh, maybe maybe talk about one or two of those. What are some of the larger, more notable transactions that our audience might be interested in? Well, that's a great question, Doug. Uh, we have had several large transactions here. I think the most notable of those transactions would be Worldwide Technology, GM, Reckitt Benkiser, and Amazon. Worldwide Technology recently leased 2 million square feet over in Madison County. Um, you know, real estate brokers like to use square feet a lot. Um, but to give you some sense of scale, uh, 2 million square feet, uh, that footprint you could fit 120 NHL hockey rinks wow. in that amount of space. Holy cow. And as I said, those are, that was two buildings, each was about a million square feet. If you stood one of those buildings on its end at just about 2,000 feet long, it would, it's three times the height of the arch. So the uh, worldwide technology uh, lease was the second largest lease in St. Louis history, um, and I, you know, I, any St. Louis and ought to be proud uh, that that's a company that's headquartered right here in town. GM GM leased uh, over a million feet in Wentzville to support its auto assembly plant there. Reckitt Benkiser leased 700,000 square feet in St. Peter's to support its manufacturing plant there, um, and then Amazon since 2016 has leased 
over 4 million square feet here in St. Louis in seven different buildings, including two within the last 30 days at over a million feet. So obviously those are very name companies and robust transactions and, and, and just massive pieces of real estate that, uh, that are just you know, fascinating to think about the, sc the scale and the size of that. Um, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, out of that list, I mean, are, are there one or two maybe you could talk about in terms of like what drove those transactions? Like why, why would somebody need two million square feet? The two that are most interesting um, of that list, I think, Doug, would be Worldwide Technology and Amazon. Mm -hmm. And, and um, probably for the same reason, and I think that, that uh, focuses in on labor. Mm -hmm. uh, Worldwide Technology is a great example of a company that has a um, um, really deep need for a lot of uh, different types of labor, mm -hmm. from executive labor at their world headquarters facility to technical, uh, technological labor or high-tech labor um, at their integration center, uh, all the way down to uh, warehouse labor in its really three and a half million square feet of warehouse um, in Madison County. St. Louis is able to supply um, all of that labor. Um, I don't think um, every metro in the U.S. can make that claim, but um, uh, that, that was a I think a critical part probably of why worldwide technology is here and remains here. Um, Amazon, you know, that uh, four million square feet um, leads to a lot of employment. Mm -hmm. It's estimated that there are 5,000 employees um, at Amazon facilities here in St. Louis alone. Um, you got to have a deep labor pool to support that amount of labor. Um, we obviously have that here in St. Louis. That's, that's fantastic, and obviously good news for us for the future. Um, speak, speaking of the future, where, where do you see us headed? Where do you see this industrial market headed? Are we going to still be doing large boxes? What's the overall trend as you see sort of what's going on in the world today and how that, how that relates to St. Louis? Sure. Well, I think, again, uh, e-commerce is going to continue um, to accelerate uh, both nationwide and here in St. Louis. But I think you know, COVID creates a really interesting um, situation and opportunity. It's certainly an inflection point, I think, in industrial real estate. Um, as companies um, probably turn away from a reliance on China uh, for maybe a kind of an all eggs in one basket approach to manufacturing, um, I think those supply chains are, are going to move and change. Um, I think some of those supply chains are going to come back to the U.S. Um, I think some production is going to come back to, some, to the U.S., uh, which I'm, uh, will mean that distribution will also come back to the U.S. I think those companies will be looking for uh, locations that, that support multiple modes of transportation, such as rail and interstate, um, coupled with large population bases to support the labor requirements. Mm -hmm. So we, we are uh, right now um, in the midst of a, of a significant change in the way the U.S. will supply distribution space and labor. I think St. Louis is really uniquely poised to take advantage of that. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of that in my own work as well. I, we worked with a um, medium-sized kind of, you know, homegrown manufacturing company uh, called Cosmos Manufacturing that makes pet pet uh, shampoo products and um, you know they've, they've said a lot of the same similar themes with you know being able to find everyone from you know the line worker who can you know move up through the company and eventually you know lead a shift or be a be a manager or supervisor up to the accountant and all the different workforce uh, at attributes that they can find right there at their location in St. Charles County um, you know, and it's interesting too because they serve uh, 68 countries. So, so you know, going back to your your commentary about supply chains, I mean, obviously the the global supply chain isn't going to shut down, but but the ability to sort of look at what you can all do in one location uh, and and can you serve the world from one location, I think I would agree. It seems like that's a, that's a huge opportunity for St. Louis, and you can do all those things here because of the labor and because of those transportation assets that you, and, and locational assets that you mentioned. 
Um, so, so building on that a little bit, let's, let's talk a little bit about what, you know, why, why someone would want to locate a business here. I mean, you're, you're involved in site selection. You know, when you're out working with your clients or, or you're representing a building owner who's got a, pro, you know, you, you're showing a building to a prospect, you know, what, what about St. Louis um, do they like? What, what are some of the things? Why, why are they here? Why are they looking? Why could this work for their business? I think the answer is a simple one, um, and it's central location it's multiple modes of transportation, and it's a large, diverse workforce. Um, I think oftentimes uh, maybe we look for um, silver bullet type answers of what we may need here um, to attract new business. I think we have all um, that we need here um, um, from, a, from a point of entry standpoint to attract business here. You know, one thing, um I, when, when I sort of think about the local market here and you think about uh, and drilling down a little bit from more of a global perspective down to more of a, uh, you know, sub-global perspective, let's say, you know, we have a lot of consumer uh, products companies. You've, you've mentioned a few of them already, Reckon, ben, ben Kaiser, Procter & Gamble. Um, what, and, and those companies, they're interesting because they have large distribution centers, but they also have large manufacturing plants here. And so maybe, maybe talk a little bit about um, the, re the relationship between a manufacturing plant and a DC. Uh, are, they, are they related? I mean, if I'm going to select where to put my distribution center, does it need to be near my manufacturing plant? Uh, I think it's a combination of factors, but it certainly helps to have a manufacturing plant um, nearby a distribution center. Um, um, it is not the final answer, but for example, um, Procter & Gamble has really two manufacturing plants here in St. Louis, and they've got over three million square feet of distribution space just across the river in Madison County. Um, you know, I, th I think companies uh, first look uh, from a cost perspective as to what it costs to move that product from a plant to a distribution center. Um, that inbound freight can be very expensive, um, so closer is better in that perspective. But I think they also look at how proximate those distribution centers are then to their customers. Um, um, getting back to what we talked about, uh, one of our strengths here in St. Louis, uh, that is location. So a central location naturally puts you um, in proximity to uh, more people um, and more customers. So it's, it's really a combination, I think, of at least those two things. Um, we're very fortunate to have a lot of consumer products companies manufacturing here. Right. Um, and uh, naturally, a lot of that product is distributed from here. So let's just talk about manufacturing in general. You know, we've got, um, I think a lot of people maybe watching this video or watching this, this session from, from uh, the, the area know about our heritage, right? So we've got steel mills. We've got, uh, we have, we have had more auto plants, but we, you mentioned General Motors, a very robust expansion uh, with, with auto. Uh, we've got, you know, the refineries, we've got pharmaceutical companies, you know, we've got sort of all this expertise and knowledge. And, um, you know, when I think about it in my own work and our own work with, with our firm, you know, I think a lot about in terms of advising clients on site selection and whatnot, it seems to me like that expertise really is an advantage because, you know, we know how to make complicated things. I mean, w would you agree with that? Or have you seen that in your own work? I absolutely agree with that. I, I think it's hard to quantify, um, but I've seen it here. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of St. Louis. Um, I, I, I definitely believe that's one of our assets here, and that, I think that really boils down to a can-do attitude. Right. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. Dave, let's flip away from uh, manufacturing and go back to e-commerce. So, you know, a year or so ago, I was working on a project in, uh, in Florida, right in the I-4 corridor between Tampa and Orlando. And while we were down there, all, all we heard really from the brokers and everyone we were working with was just the massive amount of e-commerce growth that they were seeing. And it was all population driven. I mean, that's a very high growth corridor. Uh, it's, it's one day from Atlanta, you know, it's in the southeast, and, and there's people moving to this area every day. How, how does St. Louis um, play in the e-commerce space being a lower growth market? I think we do well with e-commerce here as it stands. You know, we have over 5 million square feet of e-commerce space here in town. Now, obviously, Amazon, as we discussed, is a big part of that. Um, e-commerce really is looking for 
um, at least two different things as it relates to population. One of those is density. St. Louis, at a population of just about three million people, um, supports enough customers or enough clicks um, that e-commerce companies can, can set up shop here, so to speak, uh, and get product to those customers in a day or less. You know, what else I think they're looking for, and you probably saw in the Tampa market and what we're seeing uh, primarily in southern markets, is population growth. Right. So population density, population growth. Population growth um, is good in a couple different perspectives, I think, as it relates to e-commerce. One is just more customers. Um, if your customers, again, are your clicks, uh, the more that your metro is growing, the more product uh, that you're going to sell in that metro. Um, you know, the other thing that population growth does for e-commerce is it provides labor. So a growing population base coupled with a dense population are, are two targets that we really need to um, continue to look toward here in St. Louis to remain relevant in e-commerce. Of those two, population growth is probably the most important. Let's talk a little bit about some of our peers, some of our competitors, um, and, and from the manufacturing, e-commerce, whatever point of view you'd like to bring forth, Dave. Uh, who, who are we regularly competing with? Uh, in, your, in your daily world, who, who do you always bump up against? It's usually the same list of competitors. It's a little different every time, but um, you know, that list is Kansas City, Chicago, Memphis, Nashville, Louisville, in Indianapolis for the most part. And then of those, are there any one or two you can talk a little bit, bit more about in terms of what some of, their, what some of their advantages are, kind of what they've done to be on that, the list so much? You know, most regularly, I think we're competing against Kansas City and Indianapolis. You know, 15 years ago, that probably would have been Chicago in Indianapolis. Kansas City really has come on strong in the last 10 years um, and uh, uh, really become a competitor. Many of those on that list, Doug, have an additional uh, strategic advantage, such as uh, Memphis and Indianapolis, both are FedEx hubs. Louisville is the UPS world hub. Kansas City now has the uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe rail intermodal hub. All of those are, are examples of projects uh, that make each one of those cities that much more relevant from a distribution um, of product standpoint. And then is there, you know, given sort of what they have or sort of unique things that they've been able to, to create, is there, is there something here that you think would be, we could do, you know, to, to like, other than what we have already done or our general, you know, locational advantages? I think there's always something that we can be doing. You know, a project that I think is interesting um, and would fit that bill very well would be the expansion of the Union Pacific Intermodal Yard in Dupo. So, so tell me a little bit about that. Is that what, what makes that, does that put us on par with Kansas City or how does that, um, what does that do for us? Well, it could, you know, uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe and UP or uh, Union Pacific are the two primary uh, rail carriers from the West Coast ports, which are still the most um, uh, popular ports for products out of, let's call it Asia. Okay. Um, BNSF um, has already set their stakes in Kansas City. Um, if we could capture uh, that UP intermodal yard here in St. Louis, uh, that, would, that would create that connectivity back to those West Coast, port, West Coast ports. So Dave, let's talk about freight movements in and out of St. Louis. Obviously, moving freight in and out seems, seems pretty easy, right? We've got four interstates that are national interstates. We've got six class one railroads, five airports. Uh, we've got the largest, uh, second largest inland port in, in the country. Um, it seems like we would have it all, but you know, talk a little bit about you know infrastructure in general. Are there any regional infrastructure improvements that that you would recommend or that you've seen in your work that would enhance industrial site selection? Yeah, I think in general, uh, the removal of any bottlenecks region wide in all modes of transportation should be the priority mm -hmm. every year. Yep. I think we've done a good job of that here. You know, I, uh, the Merchants uh, Rail Bridge reconstruction in the I-270 corridor project yep. from the Chain of Rocks mm -hmm. Bridge into Madison County are great examples of that. 
um, much needed um, uh, projects and uh, really happy to see those moving forward. Absolutely, and then, and then what about sort of moving forward? Is there a game changer? I mean, if, if you could pick one or two things to say this really changes the game, I mean, what, what are they? Again, I think the UP intermodal yard um, is a game changer. Um, but beyond that, I think the I-70 reconstruction and expansion from Kansas City to St. Louis is absolutely a game changer. You know, we are a uh, uh, distribution metro, and that distribution relies on trucks, right. and those trucks rely on the smooth um, and safe movement of freight. Uh, Chicago is a big competitor of ours. Chicago is fed by two major east-west interstates, that's I-80 and I-90. Right. If we're going to remain relevant and remain competitive, we have to have good linkage um, on I-70. It is our major east-west corridor. It's our major east-west link to the world. Um, that, that project really needs to happen. Dave, we've talked about, you know, a lot of things in this in this interview. We've talked about the diversity of the workforce. We've talked about the strength of our central location, of all the different modes of transportation and different uh, positive attributes for a distribution and manufacturing cluster that's here in St. Louis. Um, what, what can we be thinking about as we go forward in terms of um, talking about these advantages to the world? How, how do we talk about this to others? Well, I think the key uh, for us in St. Louis, because we do have all the crucial elements here um, to attract business um, and to continue to be a major um, industrial market, we need to get, uh, do a better job of our messaging to the world. I think our competitors do uh, a better job than we do currently um, in preaching what their metros and their cities have to offer businesses looking in the Midwest. If we could tune our, our message better to be more unified, to be perhaps more exciting, um, and to be more clear and concise about exactly what we have here uh, to offer in St. Louis, uh, I think that would help. So aspirationally, as we move forward, uh, for, for everyone in this region that works on these important issues of attracting new business and helping you know, industrial businesses expand, um, you know, is there an analogy? Is there some sort of um, uh, call to action amongst uh, us here in St. Louis to, to, to tell that message? I think we should always be striving toward winning more. Um, you know, as we discussed, COVID is creating um, new opportunities globally. Those global opportunities and changes will relate to opportunities here in St. Louis. Uh, to use a transportation analogy, you know, I think the opportunity train is once again headed towards St. Louis. Uh, I think it's time for St. Louis uh, to be prepared for that, to be on the platform and ready to win when that train arrives in the station. All right, Dave, well, thank you for your time. Uh, this has been really informative, and, and uh, we know uh, you, have, you bring a lot of depth of knowledge and experience, and so this has been a great discussion. We really appreciate it. Doug, thank you. That concludes this panel discussion. Thank you to both David Branding and Doug Rasmussen for your time today. As Dave mentioned, we have all the infrastructure to grow manufacturing logistics in the St. Louis region. We'll focus our 2020 efforts on building on our successes and focusing on consistency to support and expand these industries. Freight Week STL is an annual event that brings industry leaders together and today's discussion reinforces the region's position as a global logistics hub and it will allow the region to better market and attract industrial users to our region. We encourage our audience to stay tuned for the remaining Freight Week STL 2020 events that includes the release of the St. Louis region's 2021 priority project list and the 2020 spring industrial real estate newsletter.